Assalamu alaikum everybody. Welcome to uh, the Islamic Heritage Month hosted by the Toronto Police Service 2022. Uh, this is my second uh, event. I did one previously in 2019. Um, and uh, we're here today. We're here to celebrate um, what Islam is all about. Uh, we, have, um, we have artists, we have poets, we have rappers. Um, we have our keynote speaker Nazim Baksh. And uh, we had our minister uh, Khalid Rashid here and all our sponsors and all our volunteers. So um, the community here has come together um, and it shows how, uni uh, you know, how there's such a unity of our community and uh, Alhamdulillah we're blessed to be uh, to have an event like this. Headquarters, uh, I would say that, uh, and thank you to the Toronto Police uh, for uh, putting this event together and bringing um, all community members, uh, regardless of uh, race, religion, or color of, of the skin, uh, to this uh, this wonderful event. And this goes to show that uh, what a beautiful country we live in, uh, where you can uh, practice your religion freely. And uh, Islamic Heritage Month is. Uh, is part of uh, that advocacy that we all do, especially during uh, these times when we want to showcase uh, to the rest of Canadians and Ontarians that uh, Alhamdulillah, uh, Islam is a peaceful religion and uh, our, our work is, is still ongoing, uh, still going on and we need to make sure that we are out there uh, explaining individuals what uh, truly Islam is all about. And I just want to take this time again to acknowledge our sponsors, who without we wouldn't have to make this possible. So can I call upon Universal Promotions, Saza Food Productions, and Garachi Highway Karahi. And again, I thank you, and I would like you guys to just come up so we can afford you. It's an opportunity to learn more about the rich Islamic history and culture within our city and of course well beyond. This month, we're also reminded of the valuable contributions that Muslims have made to the economic, the social and the cultural fabric of our city and to many other aspects of city life. Muslim Canadians have enriched our lives and contributed to the prosperity and to the heritage of our city with achievements across every field from business and science to sports and to the arts and to government. On behalf of Chief James Raymer, 
the Toronto Police Services Command Team, and the management team of our Community Partnerships and Engagement Unit, we're pleased to host this special event at the Toronto Police College tonight in celebration of Islamic Heritage Month. This event is being led by our Services Muslim Community Consultative Committee, who play an incredibly important role by ensuring that the Toronto Police Service is informed on the issues that matter to Toronto's Muslim communities. By hearing directly from community voices, we are strengthening the lines of communication between people of Muslim faith in the city and the police. So these are these are all part of different CCCs. Um, on this side, we have all the Muslim CCCs, and this is the work we do. Um, is this on? Yeah, sorry. Uh, this is the work we do. Uh, we do events like this, and we also try to um, tackle issues such as Islamophobia and other issues that are um, that are affecting our communities. So the, t the, the, the team here has uh, organized this event tonight, and uh, they deserve a round of applause. Thank you, guys. Today, they are here to show you a trailer of a documentary that they have been working on. So please look over to the screens. And after the video, the Canadian Pakistani narrative uh, would like to explain uh, why that they thought that this doing this documentary was a good idea. Islamophobia is not simply an attack on Muslims, it's an attack on all Canadians. How long are we gonna have our eyes closed toward all this? A hate crime is basically any group. The Canada that I know, the Canada I believe we're capable of, is that we root out that hate. We have zero tolerance for, for that hate. Six Muslim men were gunned down in a mosque. This is exactly where it happened here. This is. That was just a trailer for the documentary that we've been working for quite a long time. It's called Islamophobia. And the reason to make this documentary is because there's this one word that keeps coming up. It's called perspective. And media has the power to change perspective, create perspective. Uh, for many years, uh, you'll see movie industries like Hollywood, Bollywood. They probably show you a movie and create a perspective about a specific certain group, like for example, Muslim group, like you know, certain wardrobe or people wearing certain attire are bad people or something like that, which is obviously a negative perspective. So, and every other individual in the Hollywood or Bollywood seems to be catching on the bandwagon of this perspective, the negative perspective, because it could be for financial gains, it could be for political gains, because there's always a, a, an agenda behind it. But the problem over here is like, nobody is doing a counter perspective for that. Like, how do we do that? Because as a filmmaker, as a person in the media, it's also our responsibility to show the other side of the perspective, the positive perspective. So this is what we're trying to achieve with the documentary Islamophobia to raise the awareness. I am here to call upon you guys, as uh, we've been working very close with different police services, we've been interviewing them, and they've been doing a great job on the street. But at the same time, we need to come up, as you guys are the political leaders here, or the religious leaders here, or community leaders here, you guys need to tackle it on your own basis as well. You guys gotta, when you meet the other politicians, it's very easy for people to use words like Islamists, Muslim terrorists, right? Muslim countries where terrorism is being breathed. So you guys are the one who take the responsibility because when you meet these leaders of our community, you go out and you correct them. They're like, you do not use these words because these words, they may use it in different contexts, but a lot of people on the street do not understand it. And as my friend said right here, that sometimes if they see you wearing this attire, they'll think you're a terrorist. If they see you wearing a hijab, they think you're a terrorist. So this is the narrative we want to go against. And this is where we want to come out and help our police force and the other forces who are out there tackling Islamophobia for us to help them out, that you guys as a leader stand up and help us out on this. Thank you very much. Shazan and uh, Aryan has already said it all, but um, again, it's uh, definitely an honor to be here. It's an honor to be part of uh, this uh, wonderful uh, team of Korean Pakistani narrative. Uh, we all are like-minded people who always try to bring some change in the society. And this is what our motive is, this is what our target is, and um, I strongly believe in this thing that 
small steps can make big difference. And we all are working on this together. Thank you. This is rap music, everybody clap to it. The message here is trying to reach every last student. If you put your mind to something, you can do it. Any obstacle you come across, you can smash through it. Out of everything I was told in school, the best life lesson I learned was the golden rule. If you treat everybody how you'd want to be treated, discrimination is a crime that would not be repeated. So to all my people from Moosonee to Queens Park, we all shine in different ways when the world seems dark. But life isn't perfect, yeah, we strive for resiliency. So I'm trying to spread some love across the industry, yo. I hope everyone's feeling the flow, so put your hands up and let the chorus Go. I said, I hope everyone's feeling the flow. Make some noise if you love the city of Toronto. It goes being inclusive is the key. So can we please put our hands together for Nantifuck? In the over three decades that I've been with the CBC, I've witnessed events and occurrences at home and abroad from a privileged lens. Most days, I'm looking out. But as a member of the Muslim community, I can't help but also look within. In 1969, the CBC's TV show, which was a precursor to the now The National, focused on the opening of the first mosque in Toronto. A footnote, it was so long ago, the footage is in black and white. In an interview with the chairman of the mosque committee, Sid Ali Karim, he said that he had arrived in Canada in 1928 when there were about 40 Muslims in the city. Karim said that there was now no about 5,000 Muslims in Toronto. And much has changed in the 50 years since. The StatScan census report that came out earlier this week shows that after Christianity, Islam was the second most commonly reported religion in Canada in 2021. Toronto and Canada is now our home, whether we were born here or arrived at some point in our lives. That distinction doesn't change even as we continue to refer to the country of our birth as home. So the question for me as we celebrate yet another Islamic Heritage Month is what is the state of the Muslim home? And finally, to those who profit from hate, please accept our invitation as well. Set aside your hate and come into our homes. We can serve you up some spicy lamb biryani, or we can tamper it down with raita. We have chai wala, but if you prefer timis, that's never going to be a problem. Thank you once again to the Muslim Consultative Committee, to Constable Harun Siddiqui, and to Haji Omar Farouk, President of the International Muslim Organization, for inviting me to speak to you this evening. Thank you. Message Oh. Mm -hmm. 
handed me 